Although Enzo Ferrari and Carroll Shelby really hated one another, their goals were very similar. They were there building production cars in order to win races and win championships. And that's exactly what Carroll Shelby had on his mind from day one in 1962. He was after the World Manufacturers Championship. But in order to do that, he had to develop a car that really wasn't a race car. So in 62, he took a 260 Cobra, took it down to the Bahamas, and started beating the tar out of those cars. But every race, he learned. He learned what wasn't reliable, and he built the car stronger and faster. Well, after a season of doing that, he realized that he would have to go over to Le Mans. And that's exactly what he did in 63 he sent two cars over there those two cars came back with a first in the four to five liter class and a third in the gt class not too bad well he realized he could take all that technology that he had developed over there and bring them to the usrc and that's what he did with six of these le mans replica cars they learned a lot over in france and one of the things they did is duplicate the body the car's got kind of a unique trunk. It's got a reverse mount trunk lid, which is actually developed for the hardtop that they run at Le Mans. It has the front fender spats. It has wider wheel wells in the back. It's got the Hellebrand magnesium wheels. It's got the Weber setup and the larger hood scoop and the Le Mans cap. These six cars were very significant car. This is the first of the six, 2136. It was the factory team car. there's only two things that make a car real valuable. One is condition, and obviously this car has been beautifully restored. Everything is like brand new on the car. The second, more importantly, especially with really significant cars, is pedigree. Because let's face it, $200,000 will restore just about anything to brand new. The pedigree on this car is impeccable. This car was the factory team car, 2136. The first four races, and the only four races as a team car, it finished on the podium every time, with Lou Spencer, Bob Bondurant, and McDonald driving the car. Pretty impressive feat. The car was then sold to Ed Leslie. Well, the next season, he absolutely dominated a production. He won seven of the 11 races he entered. Phenomenal history with this car here. That's what makes this car so valuable. After that, the car just kind of jostled around from racer to racer, and eventually in 1980, it was discovered up in Canada, then was completely restored to the condition you see it in today. So a car like this, with its unique history, one of six built, great pedigree, the right people sitting in the seat, has to be worth somewhere between 1.6 and $2 million. These significant cars, no matter what happens to the economy, no matter what happens to car prices, will always be rock solid blue chip investment.